Hi people, Daniel from Devil and Sons Guitars here and today I'm going to talk to you about achieving a very realistic light relic on your guitar or bass. Fantastic, so today I'm actually going to be working on this Hofner bass that's next to me. It came in from a client who plays it a lot. It actually had a slight bit of damage on it already, the kind of around here where he, he's left-handed, where he'd been playing a lot and using a pick, there's some marks and there's a few other scuffs on it, which show where he naturally would relic his guitar, his bass, if he kept playing for years and years like that. Now, he plays regularly anyway, which is one reason that damage has appeared on it, but he's really keen on getting it to another level now, key thing to make it feel realistic is to look at other guitars. If you can, particularly other naturally relic guitars, Google search will get you there. And then think about how you play. So for example, in this case, the marks that had already appeared on the body are indicators of where I should focus my relicking. At the end of the video, I'm going to give some extra tips, so do stay tuned for that. I am actually going to leave off focusing on how I relic the headstock on this and the back of the neck and just focus on the body. But I do have another video all about headstock relicking. So you can go and check that out if you want. But for many people, you might just be working on the body. Great, so let's go down to my workbench and see how I relic this one. So what you can see here is I'm using a cabinet scraper to scrape away at the varnish, just really working in a small place on the edge of the base to start with. Uh, my key advice really, when you're doing a light relic like this is, to start in an area where you think you're going to be wearing off more than another area and you can start slow and slowly work up. So although this is just a small bit of relic, it's actually one of the biggest bits on the guitar. And you can see I've got my phone next to me with photos as a guideline. Now I do love using the cabinet scrapers. You can see here how it just very lightly peels off layers of the varnish. This is nitro on this one and slowly reveals the wood underneath. And what I've done for this one is I want it to look really smooth and the cabinet scraper doesn't leave it that smooth. So I'm just using sandpaper to smooth off the edges. And I'm starting with a higher grit. Um, this is 400 here. And then I'm gonna smooth over it with a lighter and lighter grit. And later on, I'm gonna burnish it, but I'll show you that in a minute. You can still see the sandpaper marks on the varnish. And I do want to get rid of that. That's why I'm going lighter and lighter and then later essentially get to the stage where you polish it. Now I'm also here using a wood knife, one that you might use for carving into wood. Later on I'm going to show you how I also did this with a scalpel. But what I'm working on is just the small dents here. Now on a solid body guitar in the past I would use things like a Dremel or a rotary tool but it's quite hard to use a rotary tool on a guitar like this because it's hollow and you don't want to risk going through it or working too hard, especially with a light relic, which is why using a scalpel or a knife like this is really good. Again, I've got my phone as a guide for what I'm going to be doing. I'm actually using some of the marks that were already there that my client had made and sort of exaggerating them a bit and then adding some others in and around the same areas. I'm doing it here in real time so you can see how long it takes and how careful how carefully I'm working on just a small area. Really don't want to overdo things. You could risk suddenly stepping back and finding your guitar covered in scratches that are bigger than you want, which is why I really recommend regular breaks. Step back from what you're doing after each little mark or each two or three little marks. Even have a break, go make yourself a cup of tea and come back and look at it because it's easy to be heads down, focused in on an area and not notice it in relation to the context of the whole guitar body, which is really what we're thinking about. Now, even with these scrapes, some of them I like looking quite chipped, but some of them I do want to look smoother. So again, using the sandpaper and working different grits. Although here, because it was quite small, I used a light grit. Now, one of the great things about the scraper is you can work on areas that are quite hard to reach with sandpaper because it's quite a a thin piece of metal you're getting in on the side and yet they work really quickly and really fast on those small areas which sandpaper doesn't always do sometimes it covers a larger area one time can reveal much more of the wood underneath so if you don't know what cabinet scraper is just look them up on amazon or ebay you can buy packs of them normally 
Um, I've got a pack with lots of different shapes, but I normally just use this rectangular one. They're essentially a bit of metal. You can file the edges to sharpen them. And that edge is what you use to scrape. You can scrape down wood. It's a bit like using a, a plane to smooth something off. Now, anytime there's a corner or an edge join like on here, it's a great place to just work at with a knife or scalpel to try and reveal a little bit of the wood underneath. And here I'm trying to make the binding not look as neat. So where it's got a very crisp straight line all the way round, I thought in some places I'll just sort of smudge it off a bit. This one's actually been varnished over the top and coloured over the top. So I can smudge it off a bit and you can see a little bit of it underneath, a little bit of the wood underneath. Now, if you're after extreme relicking, I would watch this anyway, because you can take some of these processes one step further. But I do have other relicking videos which complement this, which look at relicking in a more extreme way, focus on different elements of relicking, like the headstock, getting the checking on it. And also I've got some videos on relicking with multiple layers of colour. Relicking is a service I offer my clients, but I really hope that this video inspires you to do it. And if it does, don't forget to tag me on social media because I love to see what people do. So here I've sped up four other areas just to show you. I mean, you might want to go back and watch this video a few times so you can focus on each area. But what I'm doing here is using a scalpel instead of the knife on the top right and the bottom left. And then the knife is what you can see in the bottom right image. With the scalpel, you can almost use the side of a blade a bit like you might use the cabinet scraper to scrape away and just lightly see what's happening. And again, stepping back regularly. What I like, particularly if you watch the top left video, is how the marks just suddenly appear when you're scraping away, which is why, again, I'm going to keep repeating myself, keep stopping to look at what's happening underneath your scraper. And then most of these are going to end up with a bit of the sandpaper to sort of smooth it off. I've got a different video about the headstock, as I mentioned, and on some of that, I really wanted it to look more chipped than faded away. So with a chip, I wouldn't necessarily go around with the sandpaper to smooth the edges. You might want a really sort of crisp edge from where it looks like the varnish has been knocked off or bashed off. So here's just a close up again of me with the knife. And this one I'm going to do in real time so you can see how quickly I can get through the varnish on this guitar. I would say that each manufacturer and each individual guitar, the varnish is going to come off or the paint's going to come off at a different rate. So although I'm showing you in real time, you might find it's different on your guitar, which is why if you've got an area that's sort of hidden like under a scratch plate or something, that's a good place to start with a test or an experiment. Now what's happening here is it's coming off quite jagged and chipped, which I think I would like if it was on the headstock. But here, I do want it a little bit smoother. So I'm going to work on it with the sandpaper again. And you can see it's a very subtle difference, but you can see the difference that it does make. Now, this is my Meguiar's polishing compound. Now, if you've watched any of my videos on polishing, I often use a few different types of Meguiar's. Basically, like the sandpaper, you're working up. So this is Meguiar's 105 and often I also then would follow up with 205 to get it even more shiny and sometimes even then a higher grade polish to finish off the shine. But with this Meguiar's I'm just doing a couple of coats over the guitar to really smooth off some of those marks that might have come with the sandpaper just then but still leaving it with a bit of a sheen that maybe makes it look a bit scuffed up. Now one problem you've got about revealing the wood underneath is the wood looks really clean and you might want to get that to look a little bit dirtier. So here I am just with a bit of wood stain staining over those edges that have been revealed to try and darken them off. <sighs> right, so sorry to interrupt the video, but just to let you know that I'm not supported by anyone. So if you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate it if you'd consider tipping me a cup of tea. You can tip me a tea on my Ko-Fi page, links below. Every little helps because I spend a lot of time making and editing these videos. And I've recently given up my job teaching art to focus on making my guitars and making these videos. So every bit of support helps. You could also, as well as tipping a tea, buy a tea. I sell t-shirts like this on my website. And you know, all the normal liking and subscribing is brilliant as well. Leaving comments in these videos is fantastic. I love interacting with people. And sometimes the conversations we have make 
the whole making a video process worthwhile. I'm also on other social medias, so you can check me out there. And if you're able to, please do share this with someone else. Sharing is caring. Anyway, let's get back down to the video. So now it's time to look at getting the surface cracked, or as it's sometimes called, checked. So this is the surface as is now. Now it's a nitro finish, and nitro allows you to add the cracking to it because nitro does actually naturally crack. And the way you do that is you have to heat the nitro up and then cool it down. So first of all, I'm using my heat gun. I'm not focusing too hard on any one area in case I burn something. And the gun's on reasonably hot, but not so hot that it's leaving like an orange mark from where the heat filament is shining back on the guitar. I'm trying to get it to feel hot enough that when I touch it, it's nice and hot, but not gonna burn me. And then I'm gonna cool it off. And I use, to cool it down, I just use the sort of bottled air spray that you might buy for cleaning your keyboard for your computer with. Compressed air spray. And when you use the compressed air spray upside down, what comes out is the coolant that's inside the spray that helps it spray. And that coolant really cools down very rapidly the heated areas you've just had, but it often leaves it quite moist and wet, so I normally try to work that off. And then I would normally do this multiple times. So you're going to see here me doing it multiple times and looking closely to see the checking appear. What's interesting is the checking sometimes very hard to see, especially if you are in certain lighting conditions. So you might want to pick your guitar up, your bass up and move it round, see the light reflecting and shining off of it and see if you can see the checking there. But I'm going to show you a stage in a moment that I always do which helps reveal that checking and make it a bit more permanent and visible, especially from on stage. Now, I hear what you're saying, what happens if you don't have a nitro guitar, a nitro finish? Well, you can't really do this technique on poly. It doesn't respond in the same way. So if you don't have a nitro finish, you can't do this technique. But what I do recommend sometimes, and what I do for some of my clients, is we might have a poly finish, but then you can spray nitro over poly. So I often end up, spraying a version of clear nitro coat over the top of the poly and then using that after it's set to do this technique on. So thin gloss clear nitro on the top will ha let this effect happen. It's really hard to pick up on the camera but you can see the cracks that have appeared on the wood here. Now you're going to notice that when you're looking close up and it's your own guitar but if you want it to show up in photographs or when you're on stage, you need to go to the next level, which is this, basically washing in wood stain. Or sometimes I use acrylic paint. You can mix up the color you want. You can see here, particularly on the image on the right, that as I'm rubbing it in, it doesn't seem to really be filling up the cracks and making much difference. So you just have to be patient and you do multiple coats and multiple washes like this and slowly it will appear. Now in some areas you might find the cracks are thicker and it seeps in better. You might find on certain guitars, it works better than others. You might find you want a different color to, to wipe in. I, I like this sort of brownie color. It looks like grime to me. You can see it's, again, it's hard to see in the photo, in the camera, but you can see it's just about taking. It's a slow process, but you have to be patient. And here you can see how it's really taken. Now I haven't gone over the entire body because I wanted certain areas to look more worn than others. So on the front, for example, as you can see in this right hand side image, I'm really just working in that bottom right corner. And while we're here, I'll just show you in the, in the video on the left, me working on another area which I wanted to show the checking and the cracking in, which is the join of the neck onto the guitar. I didn't really want to do too much on the back of the neck um, because obviously you are still want that playable. What was interesting here, which you might have just seen, is it only took one coat of the ink wash for it to really stain into the wood on this front panel here. Now, that might have been because I left the ink on longer. I, it was exactly the same ink I used on the other parts. It might have been the cracks here were deeper and wider. It's impossible to tell. But afterwards, again, I'm using that Meguiar's compound just to get a little bit of the shine back. Because one thing that the heat gun does is it does make the surface a bit more matte and actually, quite like that. It does add to the relic look. So again, I'm not rubbing too hard with my Meguiar's compound. 
Excellent, thanks for watching, but just a few more tips here. Start in the areas where the relic is less likely to be seen. If you've got a scratch plate on your guitar or bass, I recommend doing a little bit of relicking under that because that way you can just test how your guitar responds to the techniques you're using. You can see how thick the varnish or paint is and you can see what's underneath. So start where it can't be seen. Also, start in an area where you're planning to do the largest amount of relicking because that way you can start small and work bigger and if you accidentally go too big on a small area, you can't go back. But if in doubt, stop, take some photos and leave it. And then maybe in the evening you're watching TV, you're on your bus to work, get out your phone, look at the photos and have a think back on them. I find that distance of time and space from your guitar and looking back in photos is brilliant. I do it all the time with everything I'm working on. And don't forget, if you do your own relic, please do share it with me. I'd love to see more. Now, I'm leaving you a little video here, which I think might be helpful for you when you're thinking about relicking. So until next time, happy strumming.